What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the latest Amazon Prime release, Ricky Stenicki, which stars Zac Efron, William H. Macy, and John Cena. When three childhood best friends pull a prank gone wrong, they invent the imaginary Ricky Stenicki to get them out of trouble. 20 years later, the trio still uses the non-existent Ricky as a handy alibi for their immature behavior. But when their spouses and partners get suspicious and demand to finally meet the fabled Mr. Stanicki, the guilty trio decide to hire a washed up actor and raunchy celebrity impersonator to bring him to life. I feel like this is like Zac Efron's revenge to us for not getting nominated for best actor for the Iron Claw. I'm not saying that this is a bad movie by any means. No, I enjoyed myself for half of the movie, I would say. I think the setup and the idea of this movie is actually pretty funny and pretty brilliant. It's just the execution of that, eh, it could have been better. There are some really funny comedic bits here. I mean, you have the gross-out, cringy, raunchy humor that the Farrelly brothers brought, because one of them directs this movie in the 90s with something like Dumb and Dumber or There's Something About Mary. They have that type of comedy in here. But what makes that comedy work in here, as opposed to maybe some of the, their later movies and for people that say like oh maybe it is a bit too raunchy that is a bit too cringy is that the character that these friends create as an imaginary friend Ricky Stenicki it works and because John Cena is playing a washed up actor who has no money and has a different name and actually tries to do like impersonations of celebrities and is kind of like the biggest you know weirdo on the planet like it works that stuff works in the background with his character before he adopts the persona of ricky stanicki i was laughing my ass off half the time john cena saves this movie a lot there are so many little manner mannerisms that he does he just really kind of goes for it he goes i'm gonna go balls to the wall i know what you want to do with the script here we go i'm just gonna do anything that i think is kind of funny i mean Minus that whole Oscars bit. That that just, that, did, that didn't work. No, no, don't do that ever again. But for the most part, he really shines as this fake imaginary friend that these guys created as a lie to get themselves out of trouble and are still using as an alibi. That I just think that that's funny. It proves that sometimes adults, we don't grow up. We're immature for our entire lives. I did like Zac Efron a lot in this. I mean, obviously, it's nowhere near as good as his performance in The Iron Claw. And I've heard he's actually really good as Ted Bundy. And in, in, what is it that really annoyingly long time? Extremely loud and incredibly evil and gross or close or something? I don't know. Whatever it may be. I just feel like Zac Efron, it, it, it just feels like a typecast at this point. Like, I feel like it, this is the type of comedy we would expect Zac Efron to make at this point in his career. Whereas I'm more interested in him being in a movie like the iron claw, but the jokes were landing for me for the first half. And then the second half of the movie comes along and oh my God, this second half of the movie, what a slog. The movie slows down significantly. This is a perfect example of a movie that just overstays its welcome. There are seven goddamn writers on this movie. Maybe eight. I don't know. I didn't count them in the end credits. But holy shit, there are way too many cooks in the kitchen in terms of writing the script for this movie. It seems like somebody had so many ideas and we're just like, okay, the scene's going to end here. And then somebody was like, nope, I'm going to come in. I'm going to add a whole bunch of other stuff that isn't all that funny, honestly. And we're just going to continue with extended scenes and extended scenes and extended scenes. There are two sequences in this thing. It's one at a party, one at a workplace. I'm checking my watch all the time and I'm just like, holy shit, we're still here. 20 minutes later, we're still in these places. And I know using the word boring is a very generic criticism. I've said this before, and I really try to refrain from using boring. But man, when I get bored during a movie, I get bored, man. I was starting to get bored. I was starting to check out because these sequences were just dragging on for way too long. And it didn't seem like there was any comedic payoff to them whatsoever and it just felt like okay we're trying to do the formula here but let's try and make it extended so that it seems like we're breaking the formula and that's not the case man it's very formulaic and it's just not as funny as i was hoping it would be in the second half i had a lot less fun with these characters too in the second half of the movie what those sequences felt like to me were 
the unrated versions of the film. You know on Blu-ray, when you buy the Blu-ray, there's always that little box on the front cover that says theatrical version also includes unrated version. And the unrated versions sometimes maybe 10 minutes longer. This was the unrated version of Ricky Stenicki. I feel like I didn't watch the rated version. I was going to say the theatrical version, but this wasn't released in theaters. This was released on Amazon Prime. So, I mean, I guess I could say the theatrical version, but I felt like I popped in the Blu-ray and watched the unrated version of Ricky Stenicki. You know what I mean? The necessary stuff that was cut to trim the movie down to 90 minutes, 100 minutes. Instead, it feels like an extended, unrated version that could have been trimmed down and extends the movie's runtime by 20 minutes. It's a two-hour comedy. Why? It overstays its welcome. There's no need for this movie to be as long as it is. I liked the first half of this movie, had a lot of fun with it. The second half just felt like it was about to come off the rails for me. I enjoyed half of Ricky Stenicki with half a bucket of popcorn. I enjoyed the other half of Ricky Stenicki with stale popcorn. I've, I don't think I've ever done two ratings for a movie before, but that's really how I feel because the first half was really fun. Second half was really boring so if you have seen ricky stanicki let me know what you think of it in the comment section below i'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well you guys are the best thank you for watching my name is alex madden and i will see you at the movies somewhere